Now I've just come back to work after a short little trip to Scotland to see my family and I just want to talk to you in this video about stings and bites that we can get here in the UK. Now the differences between the two, most stings in the UK are from things like bees, wasps and hornets and they can cause severe pain and slight swelling. However, some people are allergic to stings and can develop reactions that can actually be life-threatening. Whereas insect bites are from things like ticks, fleas, bed bugs, spiders, midges, horseflies and mosquitoes and they rarely cause serious allergic reactions but they can cause small itchy lumps um, to appear on the skin but occasionally they can become infected and they can also cause allergic reactions or spread serious illnesses such as Lyme disease. So let's have a look first of all at stings. Now most insect stings, of which bee and wasp are the most common here in the UK, they result in a mild local skin reaction. Because with a sting, an insect is actually injected into the skin and it will be a toxin of some description, which is causing a reaction. Just want to talk to you about the difference between a bee sting and a wasp sting. And do you actually know the difference? Go on, comment below if you know the, the, the difference between the two. And don't forget to watch this video all the way to the end so you learn how to recognise the signs and symptoms of bites and stings and also how to treat them. Now my little niece up in Scotland was stung and she said it was a wasp that stung her because it didn't look like a bee. Now the bees that she knows are they're called bumblebees but bees are all different shapes and sizes. There's different variations of them. Now the reason I know it's a bee that stung her and not a wasp is because there was a sting still left inside. And wasps, although they sting you, they do not leave the sting behind, whereas bees do. So the difference is that one leaves the sting behind, the other doesn't. But there's still poison injected into the person, which can cause irritation, it can cause inflammation, and of course it can cause anaphylaxis. And it's very painful as well. Now the treatment is therefore a little bit different, simply because one might have a sting still embedded, and the other one doesn't. Now with something like a bee sting, we can remove that quite easily by using a credit card or a business card and we scrape it away. We don't use tweezers because if we use tweezers what we can do is inject any poison that's still left in that sting into the casualty. So we scrape it along the base of the skin so that we can pull the bee sting out from the bottom. And as I said, what we don't want to do is squeeze it at the top because if we squeeze it at the top then it will inject the poison that's still left in the sting into the casualty. Make sure you wash your affected area with soap and water. Um, you can apply a cold compress, such as an ice pack, um, and that will hopefully reduce the pain. You can raise or elevate the affected area, which will help reduce the swelling. And make sure you do not scratch the area, because scratching it can cause an infection. And try avoid using those home remedies, such as vinegar and bicarb soda, as they're unlikely to help. If you're in doubt, always go and speak to a medical professional. So the important thing with anything to do with stings is, has the person got an allergic reaction to it? Because some people have severe allergic reactions to things like bee stings, call it anaphylaxis. And if someone has this, that means their breathing is going to be affected. And that means they could go into cardiac arrest. So if you notice any problems with their breathing, make sure you call the ambulance and ask them if they've got any medication. Now insect bites are treated in the same way as we do with stings except we don't need to worry about scraping off the stinger. But biting insects that are common here in the UK are things like midges, gnats, mosquitoes, fleas, flies, mites, ticks and bed bugs. And they can all cause swelling or red lumps to appear on the skin, which is often itchy but temporary. And it may develop immediately after being bitten. And it can last for up to two hours, but it's often followed by a small itchy solid lump which develops up to 24 hours later. Now these red lumps or swelling can become very itchy and it can take up to 24 hours to occur after the actual bite. And they typically last for several days before fading away. Occasionally a skin infection develops following a bite, particularly if you've been scratching it. And by scratching it, you can damage your skin and allows germs, bacteria to be able to get in. Now the signs of infection will be redness, and tenderness around the actual bite. You may also develop a yellow kind of discharge from the area. This is called pus. 
and over a period of several days the infection may spread and sometimes it can become really serious and you need to get medical help. Redness and swelling that starts and spreads quickly is more likely due to an allergy than to an infection. You'll seek medical help if you're worried about the infection, if it gets very pussy, if it's increasing in pain, if it's the swelling's getting bigger, or if the symptoms have a more widespread um, reaction, such as a high temperature, the glands start to swell, and you might also develop other flu-like symptoms. It's very rare, but you'd always seek medical help. Now you need to get emergency help and call the emergency services if you have a severe reaction, such as wheezing or difficulty in breathing, if the face becomes swollen, if they start to feel sick or be sick, if they have an increased heart rate, dizziness or feeling faint. These are all signs of anaphylaxis we covered in a previous video. So if you're ever concerned about anaphylaxis or they've gone unconscious, then always call the emergency medical services because emergency treatment is needed in hospital in these cases. I am also aware that around the world, wherever you're listening, there are many other types of insect bites and stings that I haven't mentioned. And if you're ever in doubt, always seek medical help. If you want to learn more about different animal bites and stings that we can get here in the UK, such as ticks and hairy caterpillars, and also um, ocean life, such as jellyfish stings, weaver fish, then I'll leave the link to videos below that you can have a quick look at. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our important videos that we release weekly for you. Thanks for listening, guys. Love to you always. Keep safe, keep well.